Welcome back! In today's video we will explore the fascinating world of exploiting misconfigured S3 buckets. By leveraging this vulnerability, we will upload PHP code that enables us to establish a reverse shell connection to the hosting server. Throughout this demonstration, we will utilize powerful tools such as GoBuster, NMAP, AWS CLI, Bash and PHP. Additionally, we will tackle the hack the box questions to solidify our understanding. Let's dive in. As usual guys, uh, this video is for educational purposes only and it's not meant to encourage any illegal activities. During our introduction, I conducted a standard NMAP scan to identify open ports on our target host. As we can see, ports 22 and 80 are accessible. Upon accessing the web page through a browser, it appeared to be clean and not vulnerable to immediate exploitation. However, what caught my attention was an email address at the bottom of the page, which uh, used the hack the box domain. To further investigate, I added this domain to the host file of our machine and I accessed the corresponding URL. Surprisingly, it led me to the same page. Intrigued, I decided to employ GoBuster and perform a vhost scan, ensuring that I include the append domain flag in the command issued. The scan results reveal the existence of a subdomain called S3. To explore this further, I added it as a static DNS entry in our host file. When we accessed it through the browser, an interesting status message appeared, indicating that the system was running. At this point, I was a little bit curious about what service is running. So I just did a quick Google search using the keywords S3 subdomain status running and the results revealed that the S3 refers to Amazon Simple Storage Service, a cloud-based object storage solution. To further our exploration, we will install the powerful AWS command line interface on our machine using apt package manager. By default, the AWS CLI comes with no configuration, allowing us to review the current settings using the AWS configure command. As we examine the output, we can see that all parameters are currently set to none. Next, we will proceed with a fascinating experiment. Sometimes servers are configured to skip authentication checks, so we will attempt an arbitrary value for the fields. However, as indicated by the response, the authentication failed. Undeterred, we will set the authentication to test now and try again. Miraculously, this time, we receive a positive response. It appears that the authentication mechanism is not robust enough to validate our authorization. Since we managed to connect to the S3 bucket and list its contents as shown here, we can now try to use the same tool to upload a file from our machine to the remote bucket. We know that the web page is employing PHP, so we can leverage this knowledge to our advantage. Our plan is to upload a PHP shell file to the S3 bucket, specifically in the web root directory. This clever maneuver allows us to access the web page through a browser, triggering the execution of the uploaded file and granting us remote code execution capabilities. To achieve this, we will uh, use the system function. This function accepts the URL parameter as an input and executes it as a system command. With everything in place, we can now proceed to upload the PHP shell file by employing the CP parameter in the AWS command. I will now grab the shell.php file we have created above and as shown here we will use the same command but specify the cp flag instead of ls and provide the path to the file as shown here. The upload was successful so now let's navigate to the web page and try to make use of the file we have just uploaded. We will specify the path on the browser as shown here and I will insert id for the cmd parameter. ID can be used to display the user that the current service is running as. And as an output here, we can see that it listed the user the web service is running as. Now let's venture into the exciting realm of reverse shells. Our mission is to establish a connection back to our local machine on port 1337, granting us remote control to the machine. To achieve this, we will create a file called shell.sh and populate it with a powerful bash reverse shell payload. First, we need to obtain the IP address of our VPN interface, which will serve as our target for the reverse connection. Once we have the IP address, we can proceed to craft the shell file, as showcased on the screen.
To prepare the reverse shell connection, we must set up a listener on our local machine. We will use netcat for this, and the command is shown here on screen. The powerful listener will await eagerly to the reverse connection, ready to provide us with a complete control. In order to facilitate the transfer and execution of the shell.sh payload, we will need a web server, which is the last piece of our puzzle here. We will need to start this web server where the shell.sh has been created, so it uh, can effortlessly serve the shell file to our target, paving the way for our reverse shell connection. As you can see here, we will utilize the power of Python to launch a web server, gracefully running on port 8000. With everything set up and running smoothly, it is time to revisit the web page we previously accessed. However, this time, instead of using the command id, we will introduce the power of curl. By combining it with the appropriate parameters, we can use it to connect to our web server and unleash the magic of piping the shell script directly into bash. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the most awaited moment. Let's return back to the terminal where netcat was patiently waiting. As you can witness on screen, we have successfully obtained remote terminal access to our web server. With this newfound power, we can effortlessly navigate and explore by employing the standard Linux commands to list and inspect files. Before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video if you've enjoyed it thus far. Additionally, please feel free to leave any questions or clarifications in the comment section below, as your feedback is invaluable in helping me enhance the future videos. Now let's move forward. I will navigate up one folder and see what other treasures await us. It seems like we've hit the jackpot here, as we have uh, on screen, we have discovered the elusive flag. Since we have managed to obtain the flag, we can now venture back to the Hack the Box portal to finish up the questions for this challenge. For the first questions, uh, we only had two ports open, which were 22 and 80. The domain of the email address, we can uh, retrieve it from the URL and I'm just going to copy and paste it here, like this. In order to add the man with the DNS record uh, for our server, we use the Etsy host files. The pot is as shown on screen here. The subdomain that we discovered um, was S3 and we can paste in the rest of the domain. The service that is running on uh, the discovered subdomain is Amazon S3. And the command line tool that we have used is AWS CLI. We have used AWS Configure in order to set the initial config for this tool. And in order for us to list all the S3 buckets, we have used AWS S3 LS, as shown here. The scripting language used for this web page was PHP. And last but not least, we can copy and paste in the flag, as shown here, onto the portal, which concludes this challenge. We have successfully exploited the misconfigured S3 bucket, gained remote access, and uncovered valuable secrets. Join us in the next video as we continue our exciting journey into the depths of cybersecurity. Stay curious, stay engaged, and let's conquer the new challenges together.